Saxon Algebra 1 half, lesson 69. Students, we have a new notebook. It looks like this on the front. I have a whole bunch of these that I bought because I thought they were really cool notebooks and then I realized they don't really work very well for filming because I can't lay the cover all the way down flat. But you know what? I'm just gonna use them anyway and we'll be fine. Um, the paper also kind of bleeds through the ink. So that kind of actually helps matters because what that means is I'm only gonna be writing on one side of the page. So there's a bunch of information about the new notebook that doesn't matter to you. Okay, well that's a productive start. Let's talk about two topics today. Um, the first one is an idea we're gonna explore in a lot more depth as we go. It's called absolute value. Absolute value uses two straight lines. And we're gonna talk later about what it means theoretically, but right now I'm just gonna give you the practical answer. Whatever is inside of an absolute value sign, you can simplify by taking it out as a positive number. So absolute values are always positive. They're like that super sunshiny person that you know who's always in a good mood, right? That's our absolute value sign. They're just always positive. So no matter what's inside of them, it comes out positive. And we will talk more about that as we go. Okay, that's all for part A. No examples. The second part is called adding signed numbers. We're going to be doing a ton of this. But I want to start out by giving you a metaphor. We are out walking in a meadow. Okay? It's a it's a big, wide, open meadow. Little distant fringes of trees way on the edges. Um, but mostly it's just a, a relatively flat, just a gently rolling meadow with grasses and some blooming wildflowers and little butterflies buzzing across the tops of them. And no, the butterflies are flitting. There are also some bumblebees, friendly ones, that are zooming across. And as we walk across this relatively flat meadow, we come upon a hole. There's a hole in the middle of the meadow, quite a sizable one. And leaning in this hole, we see a ladder. Draw this with me, please. Okay, oh, that's a crooked ladder. It's okay. So here are the grasses. Draw some grasses. Draw a few little flowers. If you have multiple colors handy, you can make them different colors. Here's some more. Here's Grace. She's got a rawhide bone and she's trying to bury it behind the table that I'm working on. Thank you, I just heard the bone hit the floor. Maybe you did too. Okay, so there they are. And here's our little butterflies flitting by. Right? They're fluttering by. Do, 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 do. They're doing little loop the loops. Okay? This is just a happy little scene out here, right? But we come across this ladder and we think, hmm, that's curious. And we peek down over the edge and we notice that it goes way down into a deep, even shaft um, in the soil. And we notice that there are rungs on the, the ladder like so. You're drawing this, right? Good. And the rungs go above and below the surface where it's even. Now, when we lean closer and look much closer to the ladder, we notice that there are little brass markers by each rung of the ladder that have a number on them. And so we notice that the one that's even with the ground is zero. Hmm, did you see that coming? And then as we go down into the ground, we notice that the negative numbers are descending in order. We can see all the way down to negative six and, and it continues, but we can't see that really easily. And then we notice that as we go above, they're the positive numbers. And again, that goes all the way up to the clouds. And what we realize is that this isn't just a ladder, it's a number line ladder. And so we jump onto the number line ladder and we're gonna use this ladder, 
is a very helpful tool for adding signed numbers. Now, John has a different picture that he draws for you in the book, and I find his example, his metaphor, his picture to be crackers. I don't like it. So I use the meadow and you're going to hear me say things like, okay, let's jump on the ladder or let's go into the meadow. This is what I'm talking about. It means visualize this ladder and this hole in the ground. Oh, and by the way, when we climb down into these negative numbers, we see like, we see places where there's little inchworms crawling along. And then sometimes we see places where a fuzzy little bunny is sleeping. There's his head and his body and his haunches. I'm making the dots because he's so fuzzy. There's his whiskers. There's his little cottontail, right? So we see different, um, here we see the roots of the grasses that go down into the ground, right? So it's cold down here. We get light from up above but it's cold and dark. And then as we get closer to ground zero, it starts to warm. And then here we're climbing up in the sunshine, right? So positive numbers we're gonna associate with climbing up toward this light and negative numbers we're gonna, we're going to think about climbing down into the cool darkness of the hole. So all of that imagery is part of what we're remembering. Now we just have a couple problems to do today. Example 69.1. says, use arrows and a number. Okay, we're not doing it that way. We're just thinking about the letter. To add negative three and positive one. So right now we're writing that out as a sentence. Add negative three and positive one. So here's the way we do that. We jump on the letter. We always start at zero. That makes sense, doesn't it? Then this tells us to go down three steps. It doesn't matter that these are negative numbers. This just tells us go down three steps. So we go down three, one, two, three. We're at negative three. Okay, that kind of makes sense, right? And then we go one in the positive direction. So that means up toward the light. One up and we land at minus two. Notice that right now we're writing all of our numbers with parentheses and a positive or negative sign. We're going to simplify that later, but right now we're going to it into extreme detail just so that you can be sure of what we're doing. And then this one, 69.2, it says, oh, we've got more to do. All right, these are two separate problems, actually. We're supposed to add plus 2 and plus one, and then we're supposed to add negative two and negative one. Okay, so let's do the positives first. We jump on at zero, we go up two, one, two, and then we go up one more, one. So we end at positive three. Okay, so what we noticed is that when both are positives, we go up and up, right, in the same direction. And remember, this doesn't mean go to step number positive two. It means go two steps in the positive direction. So we climb up two, and then we climb up one more, and we end up at positive three. This is kind of the opposite. We start at zero, as always. Then we go two in the negative direction, one, two. And then one more in the negative direction. Boom. And it gets us to minus three. So what we notice is when the signs are the same, our answer is just simple adding, right? When they're both positives, that works. When they're both negatives, it works too. We just end up with a negative. This was the one that was kind of unusual, where we go in a negative direction and then positive, or vice versa if we did the, net, the positive first and then the negative. But when we're mixing the signs, that's when we're changing directions on the ladder. This one, we went all in one direction. This one, we went all in one direction. Oh, I'm channeling one direction so hard right now. Um, you guys are a little young for that, I suppose. Um, but anyway, we'll notice pa this pattern a lot. When the, when the signs are the same, even if they're positive or negative, it doesn't really matter. They're pretty easy. It's when we're combining positives and negatives and changing direction on the ladder that things get a little kookier. Okay, that's all for lesson 69. Let me just look. 
your problems will be just like this. Some of them have matching signs, some of them have different signs, and John's writing them with a plus sign in between, like this. See how I did it for the third one? Instead of these ones, I wrote and, and here I put the actual plus sign. That's how we'll be writing it for a while. Each number has its own sign, and then we put them in parentheses, and then we put a plus sign in between. Okay, lesson 69 is history. Yay, bye.